Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shireen Saini and welcome back to our initiative, What After Dentistry? As you all know, we are a team of dentists with healthcare management background and we are here to guide you and make you aware of various career options in dentistry and healthcare. Today, we have with us Dr. Vidhi Vinayak, a dentist and a healthcare IT consultant. She graduated from the Kool Institute of Dental Sciences in 2007 and then after working for two years as a general dentist, she then pursued her MDS in oral medicine and radiology from College of Dental Sciences, Devanagri in 2012. She has won various awards during her dental education, including the Best Outgoing Student Award. She has more than 20 papers published in various topics of dentistry. After working for four years as a senior lecturer and a consultant dentist, she immigrated to Canada and then pursued Master of Science in eHealth from McMaster University, Ontario in the year 2019. Since then, she has been working as a project analyst in Humber River Hospital. We welcome you, Dr. Vidhi, in, and it's you know pleasure to have you here on our channel today and talk about the scope and opportunities in health informatics in Canada. Welcome you once again. Thank you, Dr. Shireen. Thanks for having me here today. So, you know, before we uh, talk about the formal discussion about health informatics, how this field is in Canada, we would like to know more about you. We would like to know how has been your journey after you completed MBS and why did you choose health informatics as your master's? As you mentioned in my introduction, I would kind of reiterate that. So after my BDS, I started working as a general dentist and because of my aspirations, I decided to pursue uh, MDS in oral medicine and radiology, and following which I worked as a senior lecturer in a dental college. And uh, having experience of the academics, I wanted to go back to general dentistry. I started working for a multi-speciality dental clinic run by a charitable trust. It was a, a big unit and associated with the dental CAD CAM lab. So, uh, yeah, we were managing, me and my husband, we were managing the dental lab and also practicing general dentistry there. And after doing that work for three years, we decided to explore the landless, land of endless opportunities, North America. So we immigrated to Canada and um, after coming to Canada, um, uh, I, th I would say that the reason I chose health informatics was that I wanted to learn something new. Um, and then secondly, I wanted to have some degree which gives me, you know, uh, ability to move around the world, work in different countries and explore different healthcare systems, how they, how they are across the globe. Every country has their own healthcare system. So I would say health informatics helped me achieve that aspiration. I think that's amazing. And that's, that's really nice because as you correctly said, uh, health informatics is one such field in healthcare which helps you to, you know, wherever if you want to move, you can actually start working, understand that particular country's healthcare system, which we all know is very different for every country. So uh, very well put, and I think that's, a, uh, you know, an amazing field of opportunity that you have chosen for yourself. So, uh, you know, we would like to know how should a person proceed, you know, ahead with uh, the immigration process in Canada? Should they consult an agency or should they do it on their own? Uh, so I would say that when I started my immigration process, it was back in year 2015 when Canada had recently launched Express Entry. And not many people were aware of what this process is all about. Even the renowned uh, agencies I consulted with, they were not aware of the complete process. Everyone was experimenting and trying to understand. So uh, at that stage, I thought it would be better to go ahead with the consultant. And I chose an I ICCRC, Registered Immigration Lawyer, to file my application for PR. But my experience, I would say correctly, was not very positive mm -hmm. with, the, with the agency. And many of my friends who came later, even in the year 2017, they filed it on their own because by then everyone knew how the process is. There are so many forums available. For example, the Canada Visa Forum, it's one of the most popular forums which helps you with the PR process. Uh, I would suggest the viewers to join that, whoever is interested in immigrating to Canada to get the complete picture of how the process looks like. And also if they have any questions, any hiccups arise in their process, they can openly put 
on that forum and get all the answers and all the guidance required for the process. And secondly, I would say um, the amount of the, the expenditure of going through the uh, immigration lawyer is not worth it when they can do it on their own. Right. Absolutely correct. I think uh, you very well put said, uh, you know, said this and why I asked this question because a lot of our viewers who want to immigrate to Canada, they always ask this question that, you know, what is a better thing? Should we consult an agency because they know in and out of what's happening or should we do it on our own? So all you viewers, all the listeners who are listening to our session today, you can, you know, uh, go to these forums as uh, Dr. Vidhi has already mentioned, you can ask your questions there. And these forums are, these are built basically just to, you know, clear out any questions that you have around. So, um, uh, sorry, I, I would like to mention one more point, Dr. Shireen here, the caveat associated with filing the application yourself is that you must be very specific in the documentation. For example, I would quote that even a police clearance certificate, they ask you to submit a colored scan copy. If somebody submits a black and white, that they would outrightly reject your application. So the, the people who are filing it on their own must be very specific. There is no harm in going through all the documents twice or thrice uh, along with somebody. And then, you know, it makes the process smoother. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, how much is the immigration cost uh, that is required? If somebody is doing it on their own, how much cost do, do they need? And what is the time it takes to immigrate to Canada? Okay, so the immigration cost, I would say, comprises of many things. First is the funding you have to show based on the number of family members who are in the application. And um, in addition to that, there is some application fee. I would remember in 2017, it was like $1,100, roughly around, around 55,000 rupees per applicant. And in addition to that, if you're filing it on your own, there might be some additional expenditures, for example, getting the WES, the credentials evaluated by the uh, Canada's WES, and uh, also appearing for IELTS examination and all the documentation, the associated expenditures. Apart from that, I would say that it is, it is not that expensive because all the money you show remains with you. You don't pay it to anybody. And the, in terms of the time, uh, it, it is highly dependent on the CRS scores. That is a comprehensive ranking score. Uh, it has uh, ranged from 430 to 584. So it is all dependent on that. If you keep your application there. Uh, so when I started my application, my score was just 417. So I reappeared for my IELTS exam and then my score jumped to 469. And simultaneously I was applying for my Ontario PNP, the provincial nomination program. And I got 600 points. So my score again jumped to 1070. So that was a very, very big jump, I would say. And then I could clear the, uh, the I, I, my file came in the draw. So it is highly dependent on the cutoff. Yeah. It's hard to quantify the time associated. Oh, okay. So I think that's very well put. And it all depends on your on the points, as you mentioned, on the CRE score, score right? Right. Yeah. So uh, now coming to the health informatics field, what is the process? Like if somebody wants to work in this field in Canada, how should they start about it? Like somebody who's done health informatics from India, they migrated to Canada, now what? Uh so I would say once you immigrate to Canada with your master's degree in health informatics from India, uh, in terms of the um, job opportunities, I would say uh, there might be some hiccups associated, but still there is, uh, there is ample scope. I know someone who came with that, uh, with that education to, Indi uh, to Canada and then within a month or so they could find some opportunity. And my suggestion to the viewers in this regards would be that uh, please grab the earliest opportunity that comes your way. Might be an internship, might be a contractual position, might be an associate, because it gives you uh, space to develop your network, to understand the field more in depth, especially in the Canadian scenario. It might be very different from what it is in India. Yeah, that would be my suggestion. And how is it for somebody who's doing masters from Canada itself? Um, I would say they have even better options if they do a master's in Canada, because, for example, taking my scenario, um, I had a co-op associated with my program, which was for eight months, and that co-op provided me a la launching platform to the, uh, to the market, 
as I joined as an intern and I showed my capabilities there and they continued my contract. And then I hired, I got hired in the same, uh, same hospital as a project analyst. So anybody who does the courses here with a co-op associated definitely has much better prospects. Yes, absolutely. And uh, how is the job scenario in Canada for health informatics? So I would put it as that it is very diversified. Anybody who has health informatics from Canada has a very diversified job opportunities. Many of my batchmates, my seniors have joined big companies like KPMG, Deloitte, PwC as a digital health consultants. There are people who are practicing as change management associates, uh, somebody who wants to, who is very fond of teaching, likes to teach nurses and doctors how to use an electronic medical record system. They have joined the digital learning team. People have joined as systems adoption specialists. There are ample opportunities, even in project management office as a project analyst, product managers, project managers, very, very diversified. Yeah, I think that's amazing. And uh, this field is like that only. I think you just can't be, and there's so many, you know, strat ramifications within this field as well, I think. And I'm sure this must be practiced in Canada also, as we know that Canadian system is much more stronger than what we have in India. So right. yes, uh, very well put, Seth. Uh, so, you know, how should a candidate approach a health IT organization for, uh, for an opportunity? Okay, as I mentioned before, that please try to uh, join as a co-op or, or as an intern to learn and grow within the system, to develop connections. In addition to that, I would say LinkedIn is a very good platform to develop connections with people from various health IT organizations and keep applying to uh, the, like I wouldn't say just go through the general portals like Indeed or um, Indeed or Workopolis, rather I would say, please go to a company's website, see the career section, What and just look for the opportunity there where, the, where they would highlight what job opening is there and see how your profile matches and try to fit in uh, your experiences to suit their job needs. And that is the best approach. I think that's uh, amazing. You, you've mentioned it and you know, you've, you've shown a path basically that how can you approach these organizations. So uh, we would like to know like, what is the average salary? Okay, so I would say that there are people who have uh, worked in the digital health space in India, even in big companies like PricewaterhouseCoopers, Deloitte, and they take intra-company intra -company transfer to Canada, their, their salary is not much impacted. But somebody who is a fresher or who has a, had experience in India, but completely unrelated to Canada and they start all afresh, salary might be a bit low. Um, and somebody who has taken a master's degree in Canada, I would say they wouldn't complain with their salary. It's pretty handsome. <laughs> That's, amazing. That's amazing. So what is an average you know, salary? If you could just mention just an average number. Sure. So it ranges anywhere between 60 to 100K. Okay. 60k to 100k annually because people who are who are working for big companies i know my batchmates who are doing really cool stuff with ai and digital pathology radiology and all and all stuff they're they're getting very very good salary so this is for somebody who's done masters right yeah from canada from canada and anybody who uh, who comes even from india they might begin low but once they start evolving, learning new things, try to, it's, it's all more individualistic approach. So I would say they can also quickly climb up the ladder. Yeah. And, you know, we always have this notion like 60, uh, suppose somebody starting, say, with 50,000, you know, Canadian dollars. I would just like to uh, ask you that is this enough for a family of three or four to survive in Canada? Uh, so this is a very subjective question, I would say. It all depends upon your lifestyle. Uh, so I would say somebody who is coming fresh to Canada and doesn't own a house and is renting out and has two kids, uh, to put it that way, uh, I think it should be sufficient. But um, if you say that I should be uh, like saving huge amount, that might be a bit challenging if one person is working. But if both parents are working or... Uh, yeah, then it should be fine, I guess. It should be, it should give you a good lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. So any one of you who had this, you know, question, because we have been getting these kind of questions, like what is the amount or how much salary do we need to survive with the family of, you know, minimum four? 
and as you very correctly mentioned it's a very subjective thing i mean how do you live how what is your lifestyle what kind of things you follow uh, you cannot define this for every person for every person right. the needs are very different correct it also depends suppose now you're moving with your kids at what age are you moving with you correct the small kid your expenses would be on a lower side if you're moving right. with a kid who needs schooling also who needs to go for education everything then also i think uh, you know the expenses might go up or high depending on what is your uh, take on that uh, so dr shreen i would i would say i can conduct a whole session <laughs> on this topic it's a very very broad topic to to put it as uh, so anybody who is coming to canada and has a small kid i would say they have rather higher expenses because first they can't leave their child they have to put the child in the daycare so daycare expenses are also very high and if one of the partner chooses not to work to keep the child especially in covid times many people are thinking let me not go to work because then i have to put my child in daycare putting them at a risk so in those in those situations one of the partner cannot work at all so um, i would say that anybody who has grown up ch- children are in a better position because then their kids can go to school education is completely free in canada that's the best part healthcare system is completely free i won't put it as free but a prepaid sort of a system where you pay the taxes in advance and then take the advantage of yeah. of that uh, of that and um, yeah in terms of the uh, car and in car insurance and uh, renting out it's all very subjective and an additional advice i would like to give to my viewers is that tier 2 cities are actually a better place to stay but uh, the you may not get like a lot of big companies putting up their offices in extremely small towns but tier 2 cities do have the offices and you can work there the renting is cheaper car car insurance is cheaper and um, i think you get pretty much settled if you move to tier 2 cities like calgary like ottawa and all those cities instead of just you know everybody comes and flocks into toronto or vancouver that's not the best approach even i took that approach and i am trying hard to move out of here <laughs> but uh, but i would i would suggest that uh, we can discuss this endlessly there are 101 uh, ifs and buts associated with this absolutely absolutely it's a very very subjective question but just mm-hmm. to give a fair idea to the or to the audience it totally depends on how your lifestyle is what you choose and how you choose to live in canada so as dr vidhi said 50000 Okay, if you are starting with it's it would be sufficient. It's just that you will have to adjust your lifestyle a, a little bit. Of course, once you start working and once you start growing, the income will always increase. That's the one thing that we should always remember. So it really doesn't matter if you're starting at low. So uh, you know, Doctor Vidhi, are there few courses online or you know what would you recommend if somebody wants to understand Canadian healthcare system? what kind of courses should a person go for uh i would say uh on like forums like coursera or um, x uh, edx they don't have any courses associated with canadian healthcare system but um uh if you take up courses like masters in e health or public health health research methodology and uh, health informatics you always have courses of canadian healthcare system in in those particular masters degree and um, uh, further to that i would say that it, though i was taught what canadian healthcare system looks like but i the nitty gritty details of the canadian healthcare system i got to know once i was into my internship when you are working you know you are you are almost into that role that time you realize oh my education was telling me this but there is much more to this yeah right absolutely and i think that happens everywhere what we are taught right. uh is not exactly a match to the real world it's only when you step out and then you get to know what exactly is happening so right. uh, yes absolutely correct uh what are the latest advancements that are happening in healthcare informatics that you see we do know that what are the ones that are happening but just for the viewers what specifically is happening to canada i can again speak and lessly to this but i would try to minimize keeping being mindful of the time so the the hospital i'm working in is humber river hospital it is north america's most digitally advanced hospital and i would say we have automated guided vehicles roaming around we don't have any human 
uh, taking, you know, linen and medication and everything to the 12th floor, to the 14th floor. There are AGVs, the automated guided vehicles from GE Healthcare who carry everything to the floor. So that is the level of automation we have here. It's a huge platform to learn. We have people doing, you know, cool stuff with digital pathology. We have, uh, like there's so much more to it. We have command center in our hospital. Command center is the is a kind of like how stock market looks like. You have multiple screens going around where you can monitor a little bit price fluctuation. Here we can monitor even patients' heartbeat fluctuation. And then that raises an alarm or escalates an alert to the senior people who need to go and address it. So they can monitor every patient within that command center. It's all developed by very big uh, companies operating in the healthcare space. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, we, we see this that, you know, the amount of uh, uh, advancements that is happening in the healthcare system, as you mentioned correctly, that is how uh, things work outside India, because in, in India to have such kind of a healthcare setup is it's going to take a long time, at least more than, you know, 10 years down the line, we can think of implementing these kind of systems you know the last tip or advice that you would like to uh, give to our viewers today that they should follow um so i would just like to say that anybody who is uh, who is coming to Canada or is looking forward to their career in Canada, please, uh, this is my sincere request to any everybody that just don't think about dentistry. Please try to broaden your horizons. There might be some risk associated. There might be there's lots to learn in other, in other areas as well, like, like IT, like management, where you can apply your healthcare skills. Even dental AI is gaining a lot of momentum, right? So I would say, uh, if you have strong passion for dentistry, go ahead, right? But if you think that you can learn something in addition to this, or you, can, you would like to ex lateralize or diversify your skills, this is a very, very potential space. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, every, as you all know, every guest, you know, will always, or they have always talked about this, that don't just stick to dentistry, the conventional dentistry that we have been practicing for years, try to diversify, amalgamate this into dentistry, if you have that love and passion for dentistry, even if you are learning, say, about health informatics, or public health, or healthcare management, hospital management, try to incorporate these learnings for your dental field, and I think uh, you know, these two amalgamations itself is, is so much it is being talked about. And I'm sure there are a lot of dental practice managers out there in Canada that we don't right. have right now in India. But right. yes, once we start growing in India, we will have these kind of options or these kind of career opportunities here in India as well. So uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Vidhi, for, you know, mentioning all these points which uh, you have given. And this has been a very insightful session very informative session on health informatics. We don't see much of people diversifying so much, uh, you know, apart from dentistry, when, especially when they're trying to move out from India. They generally want to practice dentistry in other countries. So yeah, and I would also say, uh, Dr. Shreen, that uh, people just, uh, just sticking to dentistry kind of, you know, makes them hit a, a dead end or a roadblock. Just this is the best way to counter that. Absolutely. And thank you very much for giving all the insightful information that it was required for this session. Uh, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it was a pleasure speaking to you, Dr. Shireen. And uh, I hope that my, my insights provided on this are valuable to the viewers. And uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out. Yes, so absolutely. I will be mentioning her LinkedIn profile in the video description. So you guys can connect back to her and ask questions if anything you have related to health informatics in Canada. So thank you once again, Dr. Vidhi. And for all the audience, for all the viewers, if you have been listening to our session today, thank you very much for patiently listening to us today. I hope that this session will give you some information on health informatics, how it is practiced, what kind of master courses are required to understand the healthcare uh, system in Canada. So thank you very much for patiently listening to us. Please subscribe to our channel, like and share this video in your network. This might help out somebody who's trying to immigrate to Canada and pursue uh, health informatics. So thank you once again. Subscribe. Don't forget. It's absolutely free. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye and good luck.